guys. Uh, welcome back to Baloney Basketball. This is episode 10. We made it through 10 episodes. Uh, or I guess we will after this is done. Um, here are my co-host, Johnny. How's it going, Johnny? Not bad, not bad. Just wrapped up my first semester here at school, so I started to talk some basketball to uh, celebrate. That's right. And uh, our guest is the same guest as last week. We brought Edwin back. So, uh, how you doing, Edwin? Doing good, yo. Let's get to it. Let's get right to it. Um, so, first, let's talk about Luka Doncic, obviously playing like an MVP this year. Uh, unfortunately, a sprained ankle issue against the Heat. Um, he's expected to miss maybe like one to two weeks or so. Uh, how do you think that hurts, well, one, his MVP chances, and... Do you think that the Mavericks will start? Because I know they played well so far. Do you think they'll start to show that they need Luca like more than what they've showed so far? Yeah, I'll just say I'll say this. Um, I think he had early on in the season he had you know a case as an MVP candidate. Um, two weeks out, he's just if he's going to be out for two weeks, that case is over. Uh, as we're recording this, the Bucks just beat the Lakers, and Giannis had another ridiculous game. So to me, he's the front runner. You got Harden right there. You got LeBron, AD, Siakam's here. So there's just too many guys for Luka to overcome at this point. Um, and I think we can all agree that the Mavs have just exceeded expectations since the beginning of the season. Um, their bench has been very good. Luke has been very good, and this is all well. Porzingis has not been very good. So if uh, Porzingis can just continue to get his feet under him and become I think they'll be, uh, kind of stay afloat without Luka, but this team is not like a dangerous threat against the West top team or the NBA's top teams without uh, Luka. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, he was definitely having an MVP type season. Um, he did get hurt. I think what was it like three, four, uh, four games ago, something like that. I'm not sure how many games he played exactly, but um, how many games he's missed exactly. And I do believe the Mavs did get an impressive win over somebody. Who did they just beat without Luka? Bucks. Yeah, they did. Okay, exactly. Yeah. So he definitely did have an MVP case. However, I mean, I personally, I would have given it to. Um, I mean, I think even still, Giannis is probably leading the the MVP race. But um, like you said, like you said, um, Johnny, he's definitely not. The Mavs are definitely not going to be a real big threat as far as you know, without Luca to any of the top tier Western teams. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous to even think that. Uh, Chris Tass has been getting. You know, he's starting to get his feet back under him. He was playing pretty pathetic towards the beginning of the year. And um, that's pretty much it, actually. What's going on with my man? He took his mic off. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but just kind of on that topic, um, and when you think about it, not only has the Mavs bench been good, but it's been very deep. Um, mm-hmm. Think about Jalen Brunson. Uh, who else is coming off that bench? Steph Curry Maxi off the bench, Cleaver, or? Maxi Kleba, uh, Justin Jackson. So they're taking a lot of guys that really didn't have high expectations, and they're all just playing very well at the moment. Mm-hmm. So I just think that uh, it's good, not only when you have a good bench, but it's good when you have a deep bench. And on some nights, they're going 11, 12 deep. So I think that just shows the depth they have, which is important. Yeah, you need a bench in this league. <laughs> Their bench has been surprising. Um, <clears throat> I thought they'd have one of the weaker benches. That's why I didn't even have them making the playoffs. But um, a lot of those guys have actually, like, stepped up. And, you know, like Seth Curry. Um, I mean, like, they got, like, just a ton of role players that are playing, like, way better in expectations. Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleber, like you said. But, uh... I don't know if it's going to hold up for the two-week duration, but uh, we'll just have to see, I guess. <clears throat> um, but Luca is not the only one that has injuries right now. Uh, we were talking about the Bucks, but Eric Bledsoe, he's going to miss two weeks with a fibula evulsion, which is kind of a weird uh, description. Um, do you think that hurts his chances of being an all-star? Because I know a lot of people said he might be an all-star this season. So do you think that affects that chance? Uh, I'll definitely say so. I mean, he was definitely playing good up until the injury. But, um, I mean, when you really think about it, the East is really not even that deep, to be honest with you. I mean, at the guard position, you got Kemba, Kyrie's. I don't know what's going on with Kyrie. Nobody even knows what's going on with him. 
Um, I mean, where are the other real guards? <laughs> Off the top of my head that I can think of. I mean, you got Jimmy Butler, uh, Bradley, Bradley Beal. Beal. Yeah, Bradley Beal. So, I mean, if anything, had he not gotten hurt, I could have definitely seen him being a reserve on the Eastern, on the East squad or the, you know, not East squad, but um, on the All-Star team. So, he probably could have made the reserves. But, um, I, honestly, I, after the injury, I don't think he's going to make it now. Yeah, no, I think All-Star's out of the question. But everything I said about the Mavs is just amplified with the Bucks, right? So, Giannis is better than Luka. They kind of have that second star i guess was middleton and then if we're talking about a deep bench i mean look at the bucks they're going i mean they're seriously going 12 deep on like a nightly basis they're just they're just bringing new guys off the bench they're staying fresh so uh bless being out for two weeks is certainly gonna hurt but they have the depth to overcome it facts yeah and i think like it all depends on like when you get injured because obviously like we could I think most of us will think that Paul George is going to be an all-star this year. He missed two no weeks doubt. as well, but no because he missed it at the beginning of the year, not around the time that like voting is about to start and such. Um, like Bledsoe will probably be out part of the time that people are going to be voting, and by not seeing him, they're going to think like, "Oh, like I don't think he's going to be like an all-star. He's not even playing." So yeah, and the and the reputation reputation plays right. a, a big part into it in that. I mean, Paul George's name is just bigger than Bledsoe's. Facts. I even remember uh, the one year when uh, Durant got hurt after his uh, MVP year. I believe he, like, came back, like, just before the voting. And he only played, like, 20-something games that year, but he was still named an All-Star. Which, I mean, that, that kind of just shows timing. Of... What were you going to say? No, no, my bad. Um, I was kind of just thinking out loud. But, that, I mean, that's KD, though. Of course he'll make it. Yeah. Um, but moving on, uh, what more injury stuff to talk about, but let's throw this in. Uh, so Kawhi and Paul George against the Timberwolves both scored over 40 points. Uh, I believe Paul George at 46 and Kawhi at 42. Um, is this like what we can expect at their best or even, do we think that this is even better than they could even play in the playoffs? And like, if they're playing like this, who can stop them? Yeah, this is when everybody was talking about uh, Unstoppable and Clippers. This is what everybody imagined. Uh, and there's been a common theme with these first three teams. If we're going to talk about deep teams, we got to talk about the Clippers as well. Uh, not, they have so many scoring threats, so many great perimeter defenders. They're super deep. It's just a great team all around as well. Um, and Kawhi and PG are really known for their defense um, and obviously they're great offensive players too I'd consider them two of mm -hmm. the best three or four uh, two-way players at least in terms of wings and so if they're playing like this it's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy playoffs yeah um, pretty much I mean I, who did they play I think it was the the uh, the Bucks, right they they both had 40 uh, Paul George they had 40 today squad had 42 41 and honestly, I feel like that was just a message to the Lakers, you know, all this low management, you know, people, especially people like Nick Wright in the media, they're all talking about, you know, how the Clippers, you know, aren't that good or whatever. But I honestly feel like that was a statement game, you know, let, give everybody a sneak peek of what's to come. And when they're both playing on top of the game like that, I mean, you're not going to be able to stop them. They're both elite defenders, you know, and, and like you said before, Johnny with the depth, you know, they got Lou Will off the bench, they got Montrez, you know, they have real quality depth. And honestly, if they're firing out on all cylinders, I really don't see how a team can beat them. I mean, aside from maybe the Lakers, and even that is a maybe. And it, it, I'm just ready for these playoffs to start, man. And, you know, that's when we can get answers to all these questions, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, I think it's funny because, like, I have a friend, and uh, he, he'll know if, if he's watching this, um, that, like, he always shows me stuff, like, about the Lakers and saying, like, who's going to stop this and stuff like that. And I'm like, that is very he's impressive. Stop. But... I'm saying that Kawhi and Paul George can do this stuff as well. And he's been like saying like, well, the Lakers can do this and that. But I mean, they just showed it. Like they both scored 40 in a game. Like how often does that even happen? Like I know it happened in like what the 2016 finals, like Kyrie and LeBron did it. I think Russ and PG did it last playoffs or the playoffs before that. Yeah, so it, it doesn't happen that often. Like you don't see it like it's on a nightly basis or like five or ten times in the season by like a certain duo but uh even then this is just like one game but like the other instance that was shown to me was one game but yeah so i just thought like it's kind of like they 
they're showing themselves like they're gonna be good it's just like all matter of you know timing i think they're more focused on the playoffs anyways yeah time will tell um moving on another kind of injury thing but this is more of a like happier thing uh yusuf nurkic um had a horrible leg injury broken leg last year it's disgusting um He's hoping to return by February. Um, how important do you think it is that if he does return in February? Because the trade deadline is around that time as well. Well, I don't think they're in the... Uh, I guess if you consider Kevin Love, but they're not really looking for a center. Um, I forget what Zach Collins' time frame is, but between him, Whiteside is one of those guys that lately has been putting up some very good mm-hmm. statistical numbers, but I don't know if he's really the impact player that they want. I don't. I think it seems almost like they want to go with a stretch five, so that's why they like Kevin Lover. That's why they want somebody like uh, want somebody like um, Zach Collins out there. But the issue is then when you do that, you're just at such a defensive liability. So we'll see what they do, but. Uh, Obviously, with such a severe injury like Nurkic, you got to make sure he's a hundred percent before you bring him back. Yeah, like, like literally, like what you just said. What I was about to bring up is like, you know, you can't really rush an injury like that. Um, and the fact that you know the Trailblazers are being very playing very disappointing as the, in, so far this year as a whole. You know, I think a lot of us had them a little bit higher up. I think what are they out of the playoffs right now? I think they're not even. They don't. I don't. I don't believe they even have a winning record right now. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, no, they're like they're 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 not in the playoffs at the moment. Yeah, yeah, so they're very, yeah, and a lot of that is attributed to defense, and obviously, you know, Nurkic is not really a great defender, so as far as, you know, him coming back from injury, and, you know, him coming back in February, I guess that's when he's expected, I would say maybe just push it back a little bit more, I mean, because it seems like, I mean, this season is not really going well at all for the Trailblazers, so if I were them, I would wait on it. Well, I'll say, like, yeah, definitely don't force the guy to, like, come back, because I, uh, like, if he's not fully healthy, then he shouldn't really... Yeah, and honestly, if he's not healthy by late March, April, he shouldn't even play this year. But uh, if he is able to come back by February, I think maybe enough time, like, to get some games under his belt, maybe they can see, like, what can we make a move with? If it's maybe make a move with him, make a move with Whiteside. Uh, obviously, the other guys are now available to trade, like, 10 base more. Um you know, like whoever they want to trade. Uh, but I think the timing is important to determine if they're going to make a bigger trade or not. Yeah, and I'll say this, if they're gonna if they're going to make a smaller ish deal, it's like a Gallinari or whatever, that's probably gonna include Whiteside and or Baysmore with a pick. If they're going for somebody like Love or whatever, that's gonna include one of their young guys, whether that's Simons or uh, Little. Yeah. Um, moving on, this literally just happened today, um, yesterday for you guys watching, but uh, James Wiseman, who's, I mean, heavily protected, or kind of projected to be like a first pick in the draft, uh, but he's at least top three for sure, um, has apparently left the University of Memphis, and I guess he's like trying to like get an agent and prepare for like the 2020 draft. Um, what do we think of this move by uh, James Wiseman? All of you, Edward. To be honest with you, and this doesn't really go just for him specifically, but just college players coming out in general. Look, if you feel like you're ready to make it, you know what I mean? If you feel like, you know, you're ready for the NBA, that's your decision, you feel me? And, you know, he's he, obviously he feels like he's ready. He's already in the market for an agent. And I'm assuming he's just going to be working out, I guess, until the until um, the draft time. And, you know, obviously he's a great player for his age. I don't really like talking too much about college players, you know, because the best college player ever can be great at college, you know what I mean? But he gets to the NBA, he's trash. You know, look what happened with Greg Oden. Look what happened with Alonzo, you know what I mean? So, but hopefully, you know, with him, it's something different. Obviously, he feels like he's ready. He's already looking for an agent. And, you know, um, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, what else can you really say about it? I mean, what more, not necessarily what more does he have to prove, but um, you stay there, they're forcing him to pay that $12,000 or whatever to a charity, then he's got to come back, risk injury, all this. He's already cemented as a top three pick. Go work out, stay healthy, secure the money, and you're in a better position. It sucks, but considering what happened and the situation he's in, I don't see anything wrong with it. 
Yeah, I think the whole suspension issue is kind of like completely out of whack right now with like the charity issue and stuff like that. But um, I will say like, you don't, just because like you don't have to go to college. And I mean, there's been proven in the past, like Brandon Jennings, he didn't go to college. He went like overseas to play for a year. Uh, same thing with Emmanuel Moutier and they were both top 10 picks. So, I mean, if he keeps like working out, assuming he doesn't go like, you know, a wall and like like keep these all on the down low or whatever. Like, but uh, you know, assuming like there's workout videos that get shown of you know James Wiseman, I'm sure he's gonna be playing like some kind of basketball, like some kind of like actual five on five action somewhere. That'll probably get out, but um, yeah, I don't think. I'll tell I don't you, think this is a good situation. Like with being in Memphis, go ahead. Though. I'll tell you this: this is an informed decision. Him and his agent know what they're doing. This isn't like a, oh, okay, let's do this. Like we're not positive about it. Like they know what they know feels what ready. the repercussions are. They know exactly what they're getting themselves into. So I'm sure that they've done their research and that this is the best decision they can come up with. Yeah. Uh, moving on though, uh, we had something that was said on first take. Uh, Max <laughs> Kellerman. Uh, he's been really high on Kawhi recently. But he said that the Raptors would be champions this year if Kawhi stayed. Oh, so, God. do we agree or disagree with Max Kellerman? Dis- on this? Di- disagree, <laughs> like com- completely. <laughs> Honestly, that's nonsense. I, I, I've always felt you know that Max Kellerman had a slight bias towards Kawhi Leonard for a while now, and I just I don't even think I don't even see how that's possible. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, with the Lakers, the way they're constructed, you know, Milwaukee's obviously improving. Giannis is obviously improving. I don't see how that team constructed that way would have made the finals and beat the Lakers or even, I don't know, even maybe the, maybe not even the Rockets. I don't I don't see how that happens. As much as uh, Nick Wright loves LeBron, Kellerman loves Kawhi, uh, I'm not sure it's as nonsensical as you think it is. Um Take Kawhi off the Clippers, and you kind of eliminate the Clippers as a threat. So it's Lakers, and it's Bucks. Kawhi on the Raptors. Uh, obviously, Siakam wouldn't be where he is at the moment, but Siakam's a very good player. Lowry still does what Lowry does. Van Vliet's coming into his own. Gasol can still shut down an opponent's big. Like That team would be very good uh, with a coach like Nick Nurse. So I don't mm-hmm. think it's as crazy as people think. I'm not saying it would. Happen. I'm not saying it would happen, but I'm just saying it's not crazy. <laughs> the the thing is though, uh, like Siakam, he has improved every single year. So I mean, is he gonna average like 26 and like eight or whatever he's averaging like right now? No, but he could average like maybe 20 a game playing alongside Kawhi this year, and Kawhi would get his like you know 25, seven, four. But uh, I honestly like we gotta think the Raptors last year were. Better than the Bucks, like that's why they beat the Bucks. And I mean, Kawhi is going to be an issue if he's guarding Giannis in a playoff series. Um, Kawhi is going to be an issue for LeBron in a playoff series because he's going to keep him. Yes, LeBron's going to get his numbers, but at what cost? You know, he's going to be shooting probably around forty percent rather than his normal fifty percent. Um, <laughs> I'm going to agree. Honestly, I would probably agree. So you think the Raptors will win? I I do think the Raptors will win because they're they're almost like a contender right now. Like you I know, said, it's I not like, crazy. Yeah, but the, the thing, thing is, is you so, didn't really mention AD though. I mean, he still would be on the Lakers. Okay, but Lakers yeah, but they also Lakers have are the threat. Yeah, but it's it's Kawhi on LeBron and AD or uh, Siakam on AD, and Gasol's been. But because people underrate Gasol as a defender so much, he shuts down Embiid. Gasol, well, he is putting up. Gasol is not putting up any numbers this year, but he is still good enough to hold Embiid to practically nothing. And at this point, that's all he's needed for on the Raptors team. They have Marc Gasol, Serge Ibaka, uh, Pascal Siakam, and Chris Boucher. Do not sleep on Chris Boucher because he's a really good shot blocker and a really good rim protector. And let's not forget. And let's not forget OG Ananobi, who used to guard LeBron when uh, they still had DeRozan, and he's getting better too. So they have the defenders to do it, and they have a scheme. And the other guys, like the the random guys, like the Matt Thomas and stuff like that, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, they play well. Davis, yeah. Terrence Davis. 
I don't know. I think it's not it's not crazy. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all. That's all I'm getting at. And the other thing is, I think a guy like Kyle Lowry, I feel like his confidence this year would be is like an all time high because he's gotten over the hump. You know, last year, like that was his thing. Like he, he could never like get to the finals, or whatever. I mean, most of that was because of LeBron, but like he did it. And now I feel like he's thinking that he's accomplished it. Like almost everyone on that Raptors team, like had been working so long for a championship, and they finally got one last year. So I feel like they're a way more confident crew now. I mean, we didn't really mention Serge Ibaka either. I mean, now that I think about it, I might concede my point a little bit. I don't think it's completely nonsense, but I think they they definitely will make a deep playoff run still, at least conference finals for sure. I think they're still a better. If they had a quiet, they'd definitely be a better team than the Sixers. I think. And, I mean, but the way Giannis has improved this year, though, I mean, he's got a way better jumper now. I think last year he only made 52 threes. This year he's already at 46, 47, and we're not even halfway through. So, I mean, I think he would be a more of a threat to the Raptors than, say, he was last year. But, I mean, yeah, when you throw all those names out, you know, Marcus Hall is obviously a great big man defender. I, yeah, you guys might be right. But I don't. I wouldn't say that they would win the title, though. I Maybe get to the finals for sure. I think he's leaving. 
I, re- I really like Gallinari. I think if people watching this don't know, like Gallinari is like probably one of my top 10, 15 players, favorite players ever, which is crazy. But um, like just for the sake of that, I really hope he does leave. But uh, it's I think he will. Uh, next up, Jake Crowder, lodge or leave? I think he's lodging. I think they're gonna move him, so leave. I also have leave on that one. Uh, next up, Kevin Love, lodge or leave? Leave. That's the easiest one. He's leaving. Yeah, it's just leave. There's no no way. Uh Next up, Demar Derozan. What leave. do we think? Leave. Yeah, he's leaving. I think lodge. I don't know how many people are going to be able to facilitate a trade for him. I think. Um, I mean, this is one where I kind of think I know where he's going. I think he's going to go to the Magic. Yeah, but I guess I don't. We can keep going. But I feel that's like just, that's the thing is the, it, the thing is though. Recently, it's been like if you hear a rumor about a player going to a certain place, with the exception of probably like AD to the Lakers, like odds are they're probably not going to go there. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, the field is always better odds when you got 29 out of 30, but I know what you mean. Uh, next up, uh, Malik Beasley for the Nuggets. Is he lodging and leaving? Lodge. Yeah, I'm going to go Lodge. Yeah, I'm also going Lodge. Uh, we agree. He hasn't had as great of a year, but part of that's like how much playing time he's getting. Uh, another Nugget, um, Tory Craig, what do we think? Lodge. I'm gonna leave. I also want to leave. I feel like because he's more of a veteran, could be moved to like a contender maybe. Um, that will actually play him. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, lodge or leave? This is gonna be controversial. Uh, what you think? I think they're gonna move him. I think leave. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I think. I think he's gonna stay. Honestly, at least for he doesn't. He doesn't have many suitors, but. Um, I think he goes to Minnesota, and that's why I kind of had Jeff Teague on the way out, Covington on the way out. I think that's going to be. I think he. I think he wants to go to Minnesota. I don't know if they'll move him this year. I think they might move him in the off season. Though. F- fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Lamarcus Aldridge, Lodge or Leaf. Mm, uh, I'm going Lodge. <laughs> Leaf. I'm going with Lodge. Smart man. Uh, Johnny, you have the Spurs completely breaking up. Bye, uh, everybody leave it. I mean, they should have. It's a long time in the making. They should have already had both these guys move this year. Nah, that's facts. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just let um, the young just let the young players play. Move Marco Bellinelli, move DeRozan, move Aldridge to get a couple more young guys and just keep moving because clearly what they're doing isn't working right now. Yeah. Um... Next one, uh, this is a weird one. Uh, Marvin Williams, Lodge or Leave? I'll go with Leave. I just don't think yeah, he yeah, has any go. spot there. Yeah, I'm going to Leave. I was thinking about it. I'm going to go with Leave. I feel like he's, it's amazing. Can we just admire the fact that Marvin Williams has been in the league for 15 years? And he's, <laughs> he's still like really good. Like he's, I mean, he's not like a superstar, but I mean, he's a really good role player. Yeah, good shooter. Yeah, that's crazy. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think he leaves. Um, next up, Blake Griffin. Lodge or leave? Leave. Lodge. I think Lodge as well. Nah. Um, Bug. I know he has kind of a crazy contract, so I don't know if many people are going to be trading for him this year. Uh, next up, Chris Paul, his former teammate. Uh, Lodge or leave? I'm gonna say Lodge. I'm gonna say Lodge, but I don't think they want to keep him. I just don't think you can really get a trade for him. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I also have him lodging. They and definitely the would move one. him though. They definitely would if they could. Oh, yeah. yeah, but the final one. This one's been ongoing, like for really long now. Andre Iguodala, Lodge or Leaf? Leaf. Yeah, I'm going with leave. You guys both have leave? Yeah. Yup. Yeah, I think he's leaving. I mean, one way or another, uh, I know this is mainly like a trade thing, but if he's not traded, he'll get bought out and go somewhere. Um, yeah, he has no he has no sense in even wanting to stay. <laughs> yeah, but um, now we're moving on to our daily picks. 
Uh, last week we actually had a three-way tie. We all three of us got four out of seven. Hey. So, <laughs> kind of the consistency. But um, anyways, moving on to this next week's games. Friday we have the Suns playing the Thunder. Who's winning that? Suns. Thunder. I'm gonna go with the Suns. Um. Saturday we got the Hawks and the Nets. Who's taking that one? Hawks. Nets. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Nets on that. Uh, Sunday we got the wrong. Nuggets and the Lakers in LA. Who's winning that? Lakers. Lake show. Yeah, I'm going with the Lakers. If it was in Denver, I'd probably give the Nuggets the win because come back kind of. Uh, but uh, whatever. Uh, Monday Spurs Grizzlies. Who's winning that? Grizzlies, John Moran is the man. Spurs. Spurs. I'm gonna go with the Grizzlies on that one. Uh, Tuesday is Christmas Eve, no games. Uh, but Wednesday, Christmas, we got the Clippers and Lakers rematch from opening night. Uh, who's winning that? Clippers, no doubt. Clips. I'm also gonna go with the Clippers on that. And then Thursday, uh, kind of an eh game. The Grizzlies against the Thunder. Who's winning that? Grizzlies. Thunder. I'm also going to go with the Thunder on that one. That win either. You're going to have a great week or I'm going to have a great week. Seems like yeah, fine. We're obviously almost, almost all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going crazy this week. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think that's going to do it for this one. Do you guys have anything to say at the end or not? I mean, make sure you subscribe to my guy, Super Mario Hoops. And then, you know, make sure you subscribe to me. Merry, uh, happy holidays to everybody. Uh, have a safe and uh, happy break. And uh, we'll be back. Yes, happy holidays indeed. Um, next week should be a very interesting one as well. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode 10. Uh, and we're out. Peace. Right. Have a good Peace. one.